Hey there. Um, I wanted to do a video talking about the Pulsars module that I have here. Um, I've talked about it before uh, in some other videos. I really like it. It's basically um, a cross-fading device. What that really means is that any of these inputs, you get a single output, so it's like a mixer, but you can cross-fade, you can modulate between the different inputs. And you can do this with audio, you can do it with CV signals, you could do it with gates, you can do it with anything you like. And so I've set up a bunch of examples in this session to talk about different use cases and different fun ways you can play around with it. Uh, it essentially allows you to do or to create complex wavetables without the need of a wavetable oscillator. Um, although, as we'll see later, you can, of course, use a wavetable oscillator in it. So what I've got here, a VCO, and I've got all of the outputs, the sine, the triangle, the, the saw, and the square, all going in, and I've attached this knob to the rotation that's going on the scope here. And so you can see when I move the knob, it blends between the different shapes. And this uh, VCO module from VCV, it doesn't have any like shape blending built in, but with this, you can create it. And I mean, I just like looking at that on the scope. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So I've got a little sequence here. It's nothing interesting. Um, and I figured I'll just unmute this and we can play it. I'll just bring that up. So now it's playing the sequence. So it's changing the length of the wave because it's pitched. Let's listen. So you can see and hear what it's doing. Let's just turn this down. And that's just a really basic implementation of that. Um, and I've got another example here. It's a different example in that I'm using an LFO and I've got all of the outputs of the LFO going into pulsars. Um, and this is to demonstrate that of course, you can use other signals, not just audio signals. As I do in all my sessions these days, the cables are color coded. So up here, blue is audio, red is modulation signals. Um, so, and in this, instead of having a knob control the rotation, I've got an LFO to control the rotation. So if I bring the speed of the LFO down, it'll happen really slowly, but let's just bring it up. And so you can see it's just kind of turned the LFO into like almost completely random um, output. And the thing is as well, I'll just bring this down. You can see that as it modulates, it rotates around, but we have this button here called uh, supernova which when you hover over it, it says top pulsar random. And that will mean that it crossfades between the signals randomly. So if I hit, hit that, it'll just sort of jump around. So it adds extra randomness. Um, and there are plenty of modules that just are random uh, generators. But I guess this is a way you can sort of get a different type of random um, and it's quite spiky and you can also because it's an LFO you can change the speed of the LFO and you can have the speed of the LFO be locked or synced to a clock as well so in this case I've decided to send this modulation up to this filter here which the first sequence is going through so at the moment the filter is completely open but I'll just bring it down and bring up some of this resonance. So. And then let's bring in the modulation. 
It's fun just going up into audio rates on a filter. But anyway, you get the idea. But if we go down here, I have another implementation. I might just make it so these cables aren't so intense so we can see through them a bit. So here I've got eight instances of plats, or in this case, it's not called Plats, it's called Macro Oscillator 2, but this is a software clone of Mutable Instruments Plats. And all of these are going into an input on the Pulsar. And they're all on different algorithms, as you can see by this green light. They're all playing the exact same sequence as I was just playing before. So let's have a listen to this. I should also just mention that I've got, uh, I've got another knob controlling the rotation. And as you can see on the scope, it changes pretty dramatically. All right, let's bring it back in. So, I mean, it's the same thing again, you're just, just crossfading, but it's a really cool effect. And there are other things that we can do with this that um, I think make it even more interesting. So if I bring in another of the geodesics modules called Brains, let's bring it down here, and I'll... The Brains is a sample and hold module. So we've got all these different types of noise. This clock is deciding the rate of where it samples and holds. So it's the same clock that's controlling the sequence. And so what I'm gonna do here is bring this modulation signal out. I'll just bring it into here so it's attached to the knobs and bring it in like that. And so this way with each um, with each note in the sequence, it will shift to a different section um, of the crossfade. Let's um, unmute that. And we can further make this even more interesting adding some slew to it. I'll bring it out of here. doing. God, this sequence is killing me. <laughs> um, anyway, you get the idea. It's, it's, with each node, it's sort of shifting the wavetable. Um, and that's a really like useful way to, to use it, I guess. Um, and I have one more example, similar example. <clears throat> Although in this case, I'm using eight wavetable VCOs, and they're all uh, on a different wavetable. These ones are all samples, and these ones are all walled off um, wavetables. And so I'm doing the same thing, but I've also got this knob controlling the position of the wavetable, as you can see. I actually got LFOs, which I'll just uh, get rid of them. So you can see with the knob, what it's doing. And this one is just crossfading 
between all of the waves. So let's listen to that. And already it, it sounds like a wavetable synth, but I'm not actually adjusting the position of the wavetable. It's just crossfading. And let, if we do the random crossfading, then it does it completely randomly. So I've got here um, two LFOs at different speeds. One of them's controlling the position of the wavetable, and the other is controlling the crossfade of pulsars. And when you can, when you crossfade between the signals at a really high frequency, you get that like audio rate modulation. So yeah, that's kind of all I really wanted to talk about in this little video. Just wanted to shout out Pulsars because it's sick and I use it a lot and I feel like it gives you a lot of control um, over your signals and you can do a lot of amazing blending. And this is just like four examples. Like there are so many ways you can use it. I haven't even talked about the bottom half here. Um, that's probably for another video, but that uh, is the opposite of the top. So one signal in and eight signals out. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, like and subscribe on my YouTube, or if you're watching this on Instagram, then I guess do the same. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Goodbye.